Brakti Hawa, Brakti Hawa Shai, all praises, all honor, all glory be unto our Heavenly Father Yahweh, in the name of Yahweh Shai and the Holy Spirit. As always, double honors to our apostles, our elders at Great Millstone that taught us his truth and who are ruling well through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. Shalom, peace and love to you, Akim, that are laboring to push this truth, being prophets and teachers, and to help edify the elect of the nation of Israel. Shalom, peace and love to you, believers, you, Akim, you, Fiuakwathim, and your children. The inspiration of this lesson comes from the movie A Knock at the Cabin, all right, which stars um, Batista, you know, and a few other, you know, well known actors and actresses. Uh, within Hollyweird, you know, which this movie is like a play on Revelation, the sixth chapter, in which they go totally off, you know, on displaying what the scriptures is actually speaking about in regards to the four horsemen of the apocalypse. Now, they get particular things right, such as dis uh, disaster, such as calamity and destruction. All right, and uh, one of the characters or one of the actors within the movie, all right, within his line, he said that these things have already been going on, but at this point, they're just reaching their climax. All right, they're just reaching their climax. And that's true concerning these disasters in the world. You know, Esau Edom been around fucking up shit, you know, ever since he's been allowed, you know, to come back in power. All right, and, and, and um, he's the second horseman. All right, he's the red man. And what's crazy is the, the red horseman all right, within this movie is actually played by Irishman, which you got a lot of Irish that are Jake. And however, this individual's name is Redmond. So that's like a play on the words. But this is the elites letting you know that we know who we are. We know our role. We know our position. All right, in which all right, he represented malice within this particular movie. Now, there will be spoiler alerts, and I kind of gave some away already. So if you haven't seen the movie, you know, you might want to go ahead and turn this video off. But for those that have seen it, okay, I'm going to try to uh, touch on some particular things that was mentioned within the movies and also break down Revelation, the sixth chapter, the correct way, because there's not going to be four individuals, all right, that, that are upon the planet Earth that appear to to uh, uh, sacrifice or convince someone to sacrifice themselves, all right, to save uh, uh, and prevent the apocalypse, all right? Uh, um, first of all, the word apocalypse in itself goes back to the Greek apocalypsis, all right? When you look up the word revelation, this is the word that's going to come back, which the word uh, revelation means to reveal, What's being revealed? Those things that were kept secret, the things that were hidden. All right, and who is making that possible? It's Jehovah, Lord and Savior. Matter of fact, when you go into the book of John, the 16th chapter, in the seventh verse, it says, Nevertheless, I tell you the truth, it is expedient for you that I go away. For if I go not away, the Comforter will not come unto you. But if I depart, I will send him unto you. So Yahweh Shah was saying, that, look, it's expedient that I die for you, but I will be raised back up. And when I'm raised back up, I'm going to send back the Holy Spirit. And by him dying and raising up, he made it possible for the Holy Spirit to be given unto us so that the seals of these uh, of this book can be loose, can be unlocked, as it riches mentions within the book of Revelation, the fifth chapter. All right. So we can have understanding, understanding of things that. You know, uh, happen in the past, all right, things that will happen in the present and things that will happen in the future that are written down within biblical prophecy, that are written down within the scriptures that we at some point in time couldn't understand, all right, but through Yahweh we have an unction, all right, and we know all things beginning, all right, with the men that he's dealing with, all right, beginning with the apostles and elders. Now, uh, I spoke about Redmond. All right. Now. You have um, three other individuals all right, that were with him. And they tried to convince all right, a, a, a mo couple. All right. Which this movie does have that in there. 
And a lot of movies are starting to display that, which is weird to see on, on a scene. All right. And, and it makes you don't even want to watch all right, any movies anymore. All right. That's that second Peter, you know, uh, uh, being in that spirit that Lot was in, vexed with the filthy conversation of the wicked. But however, you know, uh, um, if you can look past that particular aspect, which they don't get too heavy into showing that, but the fact that you know what's going on, it irks the fuck out of you, all right? But really watching it for the disaster scenes, you had scenes where planes were falling out, you had scenes with, you know, a deadly uh, plague being leased, you know, in regards to uh, vi viruses that were uh, killing off children. You know, you had a, a wave of water, you know, that, that destroyed people. You know, you had fires that were offset. And Yahweh Shai said that, that he's coming to bring fire upon the earth. And what will he if it already be kindled? You know, so these things are happening in the earth in the midst of Esau Edom going around, you know, using his sword, you know, his technology, using uh his weapons of war, you know, his military vehicles, you know, his uh, helicopters, his tanks, you know, his machine guns, you know, his automatic weapons, you know, the missiles that they use within wars and ultimately the nuclear missiles, all right, to take peace from the earth. All right, he's also taking peace from the earth by going around and stealing people's lands, you know, uh, um, using bioweapons, biochemicals, uh, bioengineered weapons. All right, these particular things are happening, okay? And um, I'm trying to think of some more things that, that happen in the movies before I actually get into the scriptures, you know, to break it down the right way. Oh, yeah, you know, they were trying to convince this particular couple to sacrifice, you know, someone out of their family, all right, in which the sacrifice was already made by Yahawashai. All right, for the nation of Israel. Okay, so the only ones that are going to escape the apocalypse, you know, or what people will call the apocalypse is the elect of the nation of Israel. You know, the scripture speaks about those that are left behind. And let me grab the scripture real fast. Because to be left behind is different than that cheesy ass, you know, uh, um, uh, D-rated movie. All right, starring, uh, I believe that was Nicolas Cage, if I'm not mistaken. All right, uh, um, in which the ones that were left behind in the movie are those that didn't get raptured. All right, but in the scriptures, the ones that are left behind are the children of Israel that are part of the elect that would not be destroyed by the thermonuclear destruction or by the judgments that are coming upon the earth. All right, when you go into the book of 2 Ezra, the 13th chapter, beginning at the 16th verse, For as I conceive the mind understanding, woe unto them that are left in those days, and much more woe to them that are not left behind. Uh, jumping down, it says, Know this, and this is verse 24, uh, know this, therefore, that they which be left behind are more blessed than they that be dead. This is the meaning of the vision, whereas thou sawest a man coming up from the midst of the sea. Uh, the same is he whom Yahweh the highest have kept a great season, which by his own self shall deliver his creature and shall order them that are left behind. Who is them that are left behind? That's dealing with the elect, the remnant of the nation of Israel. So now, going from there, just to prove that those that are left behind is dealing with the remnant, right? The book of Isaiah, the 10th chapter, and reading verse 20 through 22. It says, and it shall come to pass in that day that the remnant of Israel and such as are escaped of the house of Jacob shall no more again stay upon him that smote them, but shall stay upon Yahweh, the, the Holy One of Israel in truth. The remnant shall return, even the remnant of Jacob, unto the mighty power. 
For though thy people Israel be as the sand of the sea, yet a remnant of them shall return. The consumption decreed shall overflow with righteousness. And the consumption is dealing with an annihilation, is dealing with the termination all right, of the wicked. All right, beginning with the, the children of Israel. And what's going to cause the annihilation? The thermonuclear destruction. The word there in the in the Hebrew is H3631, which is Kalayan. All right, Kalayawan. And it says completion, destruction, consumption, annihilation. So what's going to cause the annihilation? All right, is going to be the ICBM missiles. All right, as well as the chariots. So the ICBM missiles are going to cause an annihilation. Now, when you go into the word for remnant, the word there is Sha'ar within the Hebrew, which is H7605. And it says rest, residue, remnant, remainder. All right, a remainder, other remnant, residue, rest. And when you go into the root of uh, Sha'ar, which is 7604, H7604, it says to remain, to be left over, be left behind. So the ones that are left behind that will not be destroyed will be the elect of the nation of Israel. So not like that cheesy ass, all right, a, a D rated movie, which promotes that those that are left behind are those that didn't get delivered. When Yahawashai comes, he's going to gather the elect of the nation of Israel. And the rest of the people that are left here upon the earth, all right, are going to be sacrificed. You know, those that are of the wicked. You're still going to have people that are alive, all right, that are in other regions of the earth that are really catch a judgment like America, you know, Europe and Israel. You're going to still have people alive upon the planet earth. All right, you're still going to have Israelites in other places in which we're going to have to go around judging them. But ultimately, in certain regions, all right, the people will become the sacrifices. All right, they will be judged. All right, and um, these scriptures that we're going to get into is really dealing with the salvation for the elect. And also the judgment is coming upon the world. Now, going to Revelation, the sixth chapter and beginning at one. And when I saw the lamb, lamb open one of the seals and I heard, as it were, the noise of thunder and one of the beasts saying, come and see. So the seals are dealing with all right, the mysteries of the scriptures. All right. It's dealing with the uh, uh, the wisdom, knowledge and understanding of the scriptures. All right, they were being blocked at some time, but now Yahawashai has revealed them when you go into the book of Revelation, the fifth chapter. And I saw and behold a white horse, and he that sat on him had a bow, and a crown was given unto him, and he, and he went forth conquering and to conquer. So this white horse is dealing with Yahawashai, all right, coming in a chariot. Now, horses represent power, Job 39 and 19. And what did Yahweh Shai say? When you go into the book of Matthew, the 24th chapter, and beginning at the 30th verse. And then shall, the, uh, uh, shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven, and then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn, and they shall see the Son of Man coming in clouds all right, of heaven and with power and great glory. So when Yahweh returns, he's coming in power and great glory. He's coming in strength. All right, he's coming in his magnificence. All right, he's coming in his majesty. All right, he's coming in the chariots. All right, and he's going to display a great deal of power. But now the white also represents purity. All right, so the white horse is a chariot or a UFO that Yahweh Shai is in. And when you go into the bow, the bow represents Yahweh Shai conquering all right, these other nations when he returned. All right, he's going to put them down. All right, as it states within 2nd Ezra, the 13th chapter, they're going to rise up to fight against Yahweh Shai. It mentions the same thing in Revelation, the 19th chapter. But Yahweh Shai is going to subdue and conquer their armies, their militaries. 
All right, a precept for that will be the book of Psalms, the 45th chapter. And going to about the, the reading, matter of fact, I'll read the first through the sixth verse. It says, to the chief musician of the Shoshanim for the sons of Korah, Meshkel, a song of loves, my heart is indicting a good matter. I speak of the things which I have made touching the king. My tongue is the pen of a ready writer. Thou art fairer than the children of man. Grace is poured into thy lips. Therefore, Yahweh have blessed thee forever. Uh, blessed thee forever. And who is it speaking about? It's speaking about Yahweh Shai. Draw thy sword upon thy thigh, O most mighty, with the glory in, in thy majesty. And in the majesty, ride prosperously. Because of truth, all right, and meekness and righteousness, and the right hand shall teach thee terrible things. Thine arrows, because what is it? What did it say about the bow? All right, it says that he had a bow. Thine arrows are sharp in the heart of thy king's the king's enemies, whereby the people fall under thee. Thy throne, O power, is forever and ever in thy scepter of thy kingdom. Is a right scepter. Thou lovest righteousness and hated wickedness. Therefore, God, thy God, have anointed thee with oil and gladness above thy fellows. So, see, when Yahweh comes back, he's going to go around conquering. All right? And who is he going to conquer? He's going to conquer these other nations, taking down their generals, taking down their lieutenants, taking down their, 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 their soldiers. All right? Within a great war that's going to happen upon the planet earth all right and so much that he's he's going to uh, subdue them the book of habakkuk the third chapter and verse 13 thou wentest forth for the salvation of thy people even for the salvation with thine anointed thou wounded the head out of the house of the wicked by discovering the foundation unto the neck thereof salah thou didst strike through with his staves the head of the villages they came out as a whirlwind to scatter me. Their rejoicing was to devour the poor secretly. Thou didst walk through the sea with thine horses. So with the chariots. Okay. Yahweh Shai is going to be in the great fathership through the heap of great waters. When I heard my belly trembled, my lips quivered at the, at the voice, rottenness entered into my bones and I trembled in myself that I might rest in the day of trouble. When he cometh up unto the people, he will invade them with his troops. So Yahweh Shai is coming. And as the scripture says, what? He's coming to conquer and, you know, to uh, Salaki. Let me grab that scripture. It says, um, uh, he went forth conquering and to conquer. Now, when you go into the word here for conquer, the word there is nakao which means to carry off the victory, to come off victorious, all right, uh, of Yahweh Shai victorious over his foes, okay? Now, it states when you go into the book of 1 Corinthians, the 15th chapter, and beginning at the 24th verse, it reads, Then cometh the end, when he shall deliver up the kingdom of Yahweh, even the Father, when he shall put down all rule and all authority and power, for he must reign till he put all enemies under his feet. The last enemy that shall be destroyed is death. So Yahweh Shai is going to come, all right, uh, uh, to uh, destroy his enemies. The scripture says, sit down at my right hand until I make thine enemies thy footstool. So he's going to devour them. He's going to destroy them. And the last one will be death because the children of Israel will live forever. So ultimately, what is he doing? He's getting the victory. He's going to get the victory over these kings, over these nations, over their militaries, over their armies. All right. When he comes back to fight against them. And that's exactly what he's going to do. All right. It stays uh, within the book of 1 Corinthians 15 and 55. O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to Yahweh, which giveth us victory through our Lord 
Yahweh Shai Mashiach. So in the movie, they depicted, you know, uh, uh, this individual uh, uh, Batista, you know, as being the, uh, the white horse. You know, he was calm. You know, he even said this statement in the movie. He said, children, you know, and roughly paraphrasing that they are impressionable. So you got to be careful that you're teaching them the truth. And this is how it is with the lambs of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. You got to make sure that you're speaking the truth. All right. The second one that was up was Redmond. All right. In which he he um, uh, represented an Edomite man. Although we know that the Irish are actually, all right, uh, um, that some of the Irish are actually Jakes. All right. But however, Esau Edom knows that he's a red man. And when he had opened the second seal, I heard the second second beast say, come and see. And there went out another horse that was red and power was given unto him that sat thereon to take peace from the earth and that they should kill one another. And there was given unto him a great sword. So once again, in the movie, they depicted the red horse, you know, or the red horseman of the apocalypse as being an Edomite, as being a so-called white man. And his name was Redman. Which shows you that Esau Edom knows who he is. He knows his position and he plays it well. All right. He was set up by the heavenly father to take peace away from the earth. How do we know that this is Esau? Well, in the scriptures, what people is equated or, or connected to red. All right. The color red. And that's Edom. When you go into the book of Genesis, the 25th chapter. In reading verse 30, it says this. And Esau said unto Jacob, feed me, I pray thee, with that same red pottage, for I am faint. Therefore, his name was called Edom. And when you go into the word for Edom, the word there should be Adawam. H123, it should be Adawam. All right, it's missing the Y. Okay. But it says Adam here. And they write it like this is because. Uh, because they're trying to tie Edom and Adam together. All right. In which Adam is a Dama and it means ground. It means from the ground. Edom is Adawam. And this is where you get the word Edomite. This is where you get the word Idumian. All right. And the descendants of Esau. All right. Esau was called Edom and his descendants were called Edomites or Idumians. So anyways, the word Edom all right, means red. All right. So this is the reason why this red horse is associated with the color red, because this represents the Edomites. All right. Coming into power and using their sword. All right. To reign over the earth as it states that they were within the book of Genesis, the 27th chapter and beginning at the 39th verse. And Isaac, his father answered and said unto him. Behold, thy dwelling shall be the fatness of the earth and, and of the dew of heaven from above. And by the sword shalt thou live and shalt serve thy brothers. And it shall come to pass uh, when thou shalt have the dominion that thou shalt break his yoke from off thy neck. Now, originally, you know, I had once said and this this it begins here, you know, but ultimately when they completely. I right, broke the yoke was under um, when Solomon sinned. All right, the heavenly father raised up an adversary all right, against Solomon. But however, that's when the Edomites started to rebel, but they fully rebelled under uh, um, a particular king. Now, let's go to it. The book of uh, Second Chronicles, the 21st chapter and the fifth verse. So that we can get the actual name of the king, because this is when they completely are rebelled are from under the Israelites. This is when they completely broke the yoke all right, that Jacob or Israel had upon them from off them. It was under this particular king, the book of Second Chronicles, the 21st chapter and beginning at the fifth verse. It says Joram was 30 and two years old when he began to reign. 
and he reigned eight years in Jerusalem, and he walked in the way of the kings of Israel, like as did the house of Ahab, and he had the daughters of Ahab to wife. And he wrought that which was evil in the eyes of Yahweh, howbeit Yahweh would not destroy the house of David because of the covenant that he had made with David. And as he promised to give a, a light to him and his sons, uh, sons forever. In his days, the Edomites revolted from under the domain of Judah and made themselves a king. Okay. And Jehoram went forth with his princes and all his chariots with him. And he rose up by night and smote the Edomites, which uh, compassed him in or compassed him in in the captains of the chariots. So the Edomites revolted from under the hand of Judah until this day. The same time also did Libna revolt from under his hand because he had forsaken the power of his fathers. So David spent, you know, a, a long time, you know, putting uh, garrisons and, you know, fighting against different nations. But in this particular case, we're dealing with the Edomites. He put garrisons amongst them. All right. And they became servants unto the children of Israel. They were under Israel. But as it stated within biblical prophecy that they were going to revolt, you know, that they were going to break the yoke from off their necks in which they did. And this was the particular time that they did it. All right, it began with Solomon, but it was uh, fully, they fully revolted and, and came from under Judah during the time of Jehoram, okay, in the scriptures that we just read. So in the book of Genesis, the 27th chapter, all right, that, uh, uh, that's explaining that, you know, uh, uh, they were going to revolt and break the yoke, but then they were going to eventually use the sword to conquer, all right, to devour, all right, to uh, spread throughout the earth, all right, uh, 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 gaining the fatness of the earth, you know, the oil, the resources, all right, they were going to use their weapons. And today, Esau is using his weapons to do such, all right, he's using his military vehicles, his, his helicopters, he's using his tanks, he's using his warplanes, he's using his drones, He's using uh, uh, machine guns. He's using automatics. So that sword all right, covers a variety of different things. All right, It even goes into his technology. It even goes into his science, the biochemicals and things of that nature. And when he had opened the third seal, I heard the third beast say, come and see. And I beheld and lo, a black horse. And he that sat on him had a pair of balances in his hand. All right, in which these balances, all right, goes into the word zugos, all right, which is dealing with, with judgment, but it also is dealing with slavery because the word zugos means yoke. So it's dealing with the slavery, all right, that Judah, all right, Benjamin and Levi, beginning with Judah, because they're the head tribe of the southern kingdom, all right, dealt with over here within America. All right, some say zygos, you know, but it's zugos, and that's G2218. But it also goes into judgment as well. And I heard a voice in the midst of the four beasts say, a measure of wheat for a penny and three measures of barley for a penny, and see that thou hurt not the oil of the wine. What does the scripture say? Because victuals shall be so good cheap upon the earth that they shall think themselves to be in good case. And then shall arise upon the earth famine and death and great destruction. Just roughly paraphrasing. So the, the, the measure of a wheat for a penny, a penny, when you go into, you know, what a penny was worth in the, in the ancient times. All right. It says a Roman silver coin in the New Testament. It took its name from it being equal to 10 asses. So one penny was equal to 10 asses what can you buy with one penny 10 asses all right so that wasn't a cheap thing a number after 217 bc increased to 16 about 3.898 grams or 1375 ounces it was the principal silver coin of the roman empire from the 
From the parable of the laborers in the vineyard, it was seen that the Daenerys uh, was then the ordinary pay for a day's wage. All right, it was the ordinary pay for a day's wage. So the time is going to come when it's going to take a day's wage, all right, to purchase wheat, all right, to purchase, you know, bread. And it says, See that thou hurt not the oil of the wine, in which the oil and the wine in this verse represents the scriptures, all right, the wisdom, knowledge, and understanding, all right, which Esau Edom cannot hurt the wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. Now, verse 7, And when he had opened the fourth seal, I heard a voice from the fourth beast say, Come and see. And I look and behold a pale horse, and his name that set on him was death, and hell followed him, followed with him. All right, and power was given unto them over the fourth part of the earth. All right, to kill with the sword, and with hunger, and with the death, and with the beast of the earth. All right, and this fourth part of the world represents the places where Esau Edom dwell. Now, um, there's a quote from an individual named Isidore of Seville, all right, and this uh, comes from the book called The Etymologies from century 600 AD. It says, the earth is divided into three parts, one of which is called Asia, the second Europe, and the third Africa. Apart from, from these three parts of the world, there exists a fourth part beyond the ocean, which is unknown to us. And that quote comes from a book called The Fourth Part of the World. So the fourth part will deal with America. All right, but ultimately Esau Edom is ruling over all parts of the earth. And he gained and conquered over all of it by way of his sword. Now, everything that's going on now is going to get worse and worse and worse. It's going to progress and get worse and worse. So ultimately, this is a culmination of all of the things that are happening upon the earth, all right, which will cause death and hell. And that's the reason why it mentions, all right, to kill with the sword and with the hunger and with the death and beasts. All right, this also goes into Jeremiah, the 15th chapter, because everything that happened all right, in Jeremiah, the 15th chapter, which in the ancient time happened unto Israel, is the judgment that Yahweh Bashem is sending forth all right, into the earth today. Now, what's happening in Revelation, the 6th chapter, verse 8, is ultimately the things that are written about within 2nd Ezra are the 16th chapter and 2nd Ezra, the 15th chapter, which is a, a long read. All right, you can go ahead and read that. All right, read what was written within 2nd Ezra, the 16th chapter. All right, and also the 15th chapter. All right, it, is, it, it links up with uh, uh, Matthew, the 24th chapter. All right, Luke, the 21st chapter, the things that Yahweh Shai said would happen in the end times. All right, as a sign, these things are, are gradually getting worse and worse and worse and they're only going to get worse and that's that's pretty much it you know because that covers our what is known as the four horsemen all right of the apocalypse but however all right they did a horrible job a botched job of describing that within this movie and you can't expect a devil to tell the truth and put the truth out there all right which if you actually would have broken it down the right way that would have made the movie more entertaining but however in esau's movies there's always a happy ending ain't gonna be no fucking happy ending for you in real life because you're about to catch a judgment that is so severe all right you're gonna catch a judgment from your how about shy that's severe all right he's about to send death at your ass in, in many different ways all right so you got Yahawashai, which is the white horse. He's coming on a chariot, a white chariot. You got Esau Edom, which is the red horse. All right, and Edom means red. The so-called white man is actually Edom. 
You have the black horse, which represents judgment. All right, it also represents slavery. And you have the pale horse, all right, which represents a culmination of all of these things that are happening in the earth, building up and getting even worse. All right, the scripture speaks about the Heavenly Father creating, uh, um, you know, particular things for vengeance. What is that? Um, there be spirits created for vengeance, which in their fury lay on sore strokes and appease the wrath of him that sent them. The book of Sirach, the 39th chapter, and beginning at verse 28, there be spirits that are created for vengeance, which in their fury lay on sore strokes, and in the time of destruction they pour out their force and appease the wrath of him that made them. So you have economic situations, inflation, food becoming unaffordable, all right, you have uh, um, people that are going to die of famine. You're going to have people that die of fire, all right, strange weather. All right, you're going to have people that, are, that die of the teeth of wild beasts. Let's read this. Fire and hell, famine and death, all these were created for vengeance. Teeth of wild beasts, scorpions, serpents, and the sword punishing the wicked to destruction. So those that don't get taken out by those things, all right, you will have... All right, Esau, Edom, and their military coming in like a flood. They're going to get caught up in that and get destroyed. All right, but then you're going to have the chariots and Yahweh Shai come and then thermonuclear destruction. So with that, I truly hope that this lesson has been edifying our praises, our honor, our glory. Being to Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem Kakodash. Double honors to our apostles, our elders at Great Millstone. And peace, love, salutation, and mercy being to the hopeful elect. Shalom and the Bad Baba Kwambakiyam Shalom.